Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. Many commuters have voiced their displeasure and lack of support for the protests being staged by minibus operators all over the island. Members of the public too have added their voice, stating whether they believe that these protests by the minibus drivers are justifiable or should be stopped. Well, as a frequent traveler, to be honest with you all, I find that what the bus drivers doing at the present moment is very good, actually. Because when you're carrying 10 people, all right, you take 10 from Sufre, who's stopping Buto, who's stopping Unslurry, who's stopping Canaries? When you reach in town, most, by the time you reach in town, basically about three, four passengers on the bus. Shocks have to buy, bricks have to buy, gas have to put. The people have their, their household items to take care of too. At the end of the day, enough is enough for them to at the end of the day. As a frequent passenger, that is what I have to say. It's, it's a pandemic. So they should, you know, understand what is going on. So, you know, mm -mm. I ain't supporting that. Mm -mm. Half a bread is better than none. What I'm saying is that the drivers have their own pain. The, they have their family to take care of. The government can give the people full load. And everybody sanitize their hands and wear a mask. Simple as that. I came here to go to, to Grosile. And I hear well the, the bus drivers pull a strike. I can't really say if it is justified or not, but the fellas fighting for their rights. The fellas have their commitments and their responsibilities like anybody else. So if that's what they have to do to get the authorities to listen, well, that is the fellas' way of getting the authorities to listen. But I can't condemn the fellas because they are fellas that are driving for people. And the salary they're bringing home, it's so small. And things hard by things hard, Gasa. Things hard. So the fellas fighting for their rights, I care, fight down the fellas. I support them 100% because they cannot run at a bus and having 10 people on the bus and at the ending of the day, they cannot pay their bills. But I now want to go to Grosillet and I cannot get there. So something has to be done. I don't have my own transport. I cannot afford a taxi. So what should I do? Well, I can support them because of like the reason why I will support them because people need to go to work. Without them, we cannot go to work. Like on a bus, they put in three passengers at the back, which of them have no distance between that three person at the back. So if it's 13 passengers, they want they can give it to them. That's how that's how I see it. And there you have it. While some say they will rally with drivers, others are calling for an end to be put to these protests. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Janive Gonzag. St. Lucia recorded a homicide over the weekend. At approximately 3 p.m., Danny Bisset of Goodlands Castries was fatally shot. At the time of his death, Bisset was in the company of friends and family in a restaurant. Family members labeled the deceased as being a jovial and free-spirited individual. Family members say they have no knowledge of him being in any disputes. Another life has been lost to gun violence. On Saturday, 37-year-old Danny Bissett was shot multiple times about the body. Bissett is said to have been in a restaurant in the Goodland area owned by family members when a masked individual walked in and opened fire on him. Hot 7 spoke with one of the young men who were in the area when the incident transpired. Well, whilst I was coming back, I ended up hearing the shots. I think they were it. If you could walk into a business space like that, open fire on somebody and that, how much people there? Mm. Yeah, that's real. That going out of control now. From my point of view, as a young person, I seem like that going too far. For you to have the guts, for you to park in front of a business space, enter and open fire on somebody like that. There's nothing is here. There's somebody that means somebody, and I never knew him as, you know, somebody like that. The cousin of the deceased says his death comes as a shock to the entire community as he was not known to be a confrontational individual. They say they will not rest until justice prevails. Because he's not a bad person, he's not somebody that would be finding himself in trouble. He was a very jovial person, always outgoing, never had no issues with anyone. In my concern or in my family's concern, he was always somebody that was a person you could rely on. He had his business place where we was always there, like family members together. We never had any issues with our family members. We, all, we always come together and be like families, hardcore families. And 
All I can say is the person that did that have to really pay for it because that's not the way my family is supposed to be going. No arrests have been made. However, superintendent with responsibility for crime management in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force has assured the family that the matter is under investigation. He was pronounced dead on the scene by a medical practitioner. A post-mortem examination is scheduled for today, Monday, 7th of December, 2020, at 1 p.m. to ascertain the cause of death. No one has been arrested in this incident, but however, investigations are continuing. Bissette's death takes the total number of homicides in St. Lucia thus far to 45. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Janine Gondon. Meanwhile, residents of Goodland Scar Streets are speaking out and calling for peace. Very, very scared. Very scared because you don't know what's next, who coming next. You don't know. These are some of the sentiments of members of the Goodlands community. On Saturday, 7th of December, St. Lucia recorded its 45th homicide when 37 year old Danny Bissett was gunned down at an eating establishment in Goodlands Castries in broad daylight. Community member Helen Harrow expressed that she is still in disbelief. Oh, just with that, that happened when? That happened Saturday. And from Saturday, I don't sleep yet. Saturday night, I don't sleep yet. You understand? Because we wasn't expecting that in the country. I mean, in the community. You understand? Nothing like that never happened in, in Goodlands. Nothing. That's the first time somebody shot somebody in Goodlands. And he was somebody who was very close. Very, very close. And he was a good boy. Danny Guan do that for me, he will go. Auntie, I come in. Danny Guan, he will do it. Jacinta Harrow says she is still on edge following the incident. It was a shock. I wasn't, we wasn't expecting something like that, and it happened. So I find at least violence, them things, them things don't, that, that I call for. If, if somebody do you something, at least you can, there is police where you can go to and solve that matter with that person you have the problem with. So I don't think killing people, that's the right um, opinion. I don't think that's the right one. Haro calls for a concerted effort to clamp down on the illegal gun trade. Too much guns in the country. Too many of them. That alone I can say about it. Too many of them. And what I say, like, if he do y'all something, you understand? Why killing him? Why killing him? He have young children. Why killing him so? Yeah, I don't like it, but there's nothing I can do about it. You understand? Too many guns in the country. The residents of Goodlands say youth must be taught proper conflict resolution strategies. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Genevieve Gonzag. Today, Monday, the 7th of December, the Ministry of Health received confirmation of five new cases of COVID-19. This from a total of 78 samples with five positives and 73 negatives. This brings the total number of cases diagnosed in country to date to 270. Nisha Charles reports. Over the past few days, the Ministry of Health has seen a decrease in the number of positive cases of COVID-19 being recorded on Ireland. On Saturday, the Ministry of Health recorded three positive cases and there were no positive cases recorded on Sunday. But on Monday, the Ministry recorded five new cases, four from the Castries District and one from the V4 District. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar-George says epidemiological links have been established for cases number 269 and 270. Investigations are ongoing by the contact tracing team to determine epidemiological links for the other three cases. Case number 266 is a 50-year-old female from the Castries district. Case number 267 is a 19-year-old female from the Castries district. Case number 268 is a 68-year-old male from the Castries district. Case number 269 is a 53-year-old female from the Viewfort district. Case number 270 is a 37-year-old male from the Castries district. These individuals were seen at the community respiratory facility where they were assessed and tested for COVID-19. They were all placed in quarantine by the health practitioners while awaiting the return of their test results. Seven COVID-19 recoveries were recorded on Monday, bringing the new total number of active cases currently in country to 103. To date, St. Lucia has recorded a total of 165 recoveries in country, 
all of the active cases are stable and doing well. It is important that everyone is mindful of the ways in which exposure to the COVID-19 virus can be reduced. Every citizen is asked to continue maintaining the recommended infection prevention and control measures. Wash and sanitize hands often during the day. Wear a mask every time while in public and ensure it covers both your mouth and your nose. Maintain a distance of six feet from others, which is about two arms length apart. Sanitize frequently touched surfaces using a bleach solution. Avoid contact with other people who have flu-like symptoms. If you are experiencing flu-like symptoms, keep away from others and seek medical care immediately at the closest community respiratory clinic. For the Hot 7 News, Nisha Charles reporting. The income support program designed for fishers is proving to be insufficient for those who need it. Fisher folks say that while the monies have come in handy during this time, it only scratches the surface of their problems. Fisher folk have been confronted with more and more issues as the world continues to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. From decreased demand and unreliable market for fish and reduced access to fish, the fishing sector has had a lot to deal with even before the COVID pandemic. Government recently made available a one-time grant of $500 to provide some relief to the fishers, but even that is not proving to be sufficient. Lucius Henry is one of the fishermen who received the assistance. Yes, I get the $500, which that I appreciate that I get it. I already invested in the roller wire to make some more fish pot. It's good, so that the only thing that we make in the fish pot and there are fellas that pass in after we put our fish pot and teeth it and which that that's not good at all. We want to stand the government to check about that first because making a fish pot like I have my fish pot there and when I work on the fish pot which that it's a lot of work hard to make the fish pot and to see that you're making it and as soon as you take your you turn your back there are other fishermen coming and take it and put it different places. That's, that's not good at all. Henry wants government to do more to secure the investments which fishers make to undertake a service that every St. Lucian depends on. The wire is expensive, the stick is expensive, the food to put inside of it is expensive. It's a very expensive job. Yeah, so we like the government to take a little step on that for us to see well that when we put our fish pot for it's staying safe outside of there. To qualify for the income support program from the government of St. Lucia, fisher folk must be registered with the Department of Fisheries and also be captured on the 2019 to 2021 fishing license application as a boat owner or captain and crew associated with the vessel. For the Hot 7 News, Nisha Charles reporting. You're watching the Hot 7 TV nightly news still to come. Massey Waterfront is reopened following the devastating October fire. Three individuals injured in a collision over the weekend and a number of schools from all education districts opt to have students return to classrooms.